<laughs> All right, so when we left off last time, we were kind of talking about the unit circle, uh, which we did an hour or two, but it's been a while. Um, so with the unit circle, oops, we're going to go ahead and you guys have a scrap piece of paper, so draw a circle. Oops, mine's not very good either, Natalie. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that. <laughs> hey, my. Here we go, here we go, here we go. All right. Okay, so we're going to draw in um, each quadrant. We're going to divide each quadrant in half. So those are the 45s. And we also need the 30 and 60 lines. So I try to do those together, going all the way across the half. It doesn't have to be beautiful. Mine is not beautiful. All right, so we have that. So we're just kind of reviewing how to draw this unit circle, and then we're going to use it for the rest of our notes today, okay? All right, so the unit circle, the first thing that we usually do are the degree measurements, which you guys are all very comfortable with. You love degrees. You hate radians. I don't know why. Oh, you're starting to like radians? All right, so we have zero degrees here, so that's your angle is not open at all. But if it opens all the way up, all the way around the circle, then it's 360 degrees. Okay, and so we know 180 degrees is across the circle. And 90 degrees is at the top. Likewise, 270 is here. Okay. So what I typically do is I go ahead and add in my 30s going all the way around. And then I, in between the, the 30 and the 60s, like the two, like the top and the bottom line in each quadrant, I just add 15 degrees. So I'm going to have 30 and 60. And then the other one's going to be halfway between there. So it's going to be um, 45 degrees. Add 15 to the 30. So we're going to have 30, 60, 90, 120, and 150. I'm having trouble drawing my fives on here. All right. And then uh, directly in between is 135, right? So these are the easy ones. So we get 210, 225. 240, 300, 330, and then 315s in between those two. Okay, you guys all got those? We're pros at de degrees. We like those? All right. <laughs> Not so much, though. All right, so now we do the radian measures. So radian measures, as you know, a radian is um, measuring the arc length of the circle, and the circle has a radius of 1, so all the way around it's going to be 2, two pi. So we're going to have 0 radians, and we're going to have 2 pi radians. Uh -huh. So the halfway around, remember, is pi. Now I taught you guys a very, very easy way of doing this in um, Algebra 2, and you may use this when you're doing the unit circle quiz. But eventually in pre-calc, you should get really good at just drawing just a portion of the circle and not having to draw every single measurement out. Okay, so here's the shortcut that I taught you guys before. I told you to skip the 45, the 135, the 225, and the 315. So we're going to skip those ones. And we're, we're adding 30 degrees for all the other ones. See how we go from 30, we go 0, 30, 60, 90, 120, all of them are adding 30 degrees. Well, 30 degrees is related to pi. It's a sixth of pi, right? A sixth of 180. So this is going to be pi over 6. And then we're going to go through and we're going to keep adding pi over 6. So for 60, I'm going to write 2 pi over 6. For 90, I'm going to have 3 pi over 6. 120 is 4 pi over 6. 150 is 5 pi over 6. 180 is 6 pi over 6, which is still pi, so we're good. Then we have 7 pi over 6. 8 pi over 6. Notice how I skipped that 225. 9 pi over 6. 10 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6, and then we're back to 12 pi over 6. And then all you do is just reduce your fraction. So instead of having, like pi over 6 is reduced, but 2 pi over 6, how could I write 2 pi over 6? Yeah, 1 pi over 3, so just pi over 3. And then 3 pi over 6, I'm going to write that as uh -huh, pi over 2. And same thing here, 4 pi over 6. 4 over 6 is 2 over 3, so 2 pi over 3. And then 6 over 6 was 1, right? So we have 7 pi over 6. And then 8 pi over 6 reduces to 4 over 3. And then 9 pi over 6 reduces to 3 over 2. So we're going to have 3 pi over 2. And just continue. So 10 pi over 6 is 5 pi over 3. And then that was the last one. And 12 pi over 6, I guess, was 2 pi. 
Okay, so that's a very, very quick way of doing all those radian measurements. Easy enough? All right, now we do the 45s. So the 45s, when we do these, we not only count the ones that we just ruled out, so we also count, we call them quadrantal angles. We count the 90, the 0, the 180, and the 270, okay? So as I go through now, I have pi root 4. So I'm going to say this one is 1 of the pi root 4. 90 is 2 of the pi root 4, right? 2 pi root 4 is pi root 2. We're good there. 135 is 3 pi over 4. Pi is 4 pi over 4, so we're good. 225 is 5 pi over 4. 350, or 270, uh, 270 degrees was 6 pi over 4. Well, 6 over 4 reduces down to 3 over 2, so we're good. And 315 is 7 pi over 4, so we're good. When in doubt, you can always do your conversion. So if you get stuck and you're like, oh my gosh, I have no idea how to do 315 degrees, then multiply by pi over 180. It would take you forever on your quiz if you did that for every single one, but if you get stuck on just a couple, you could always do a conversion, okay? All right, now for the points. We haven't talked much about the points. We're going to talk about that a little bit more today. We do know that there's um, two different possibilities, well, three kind of. Um, so we could have like one half comma root three over two. We could have root three over two comma one half. So these could go either way. We don't know. We got to figure it out. And we could also have root twos over twos, or combinations of ones and zeros, right? Zero and one. Okay. So these are our only possibilities for the different points, and they come from 36 to 90 triangles and 45 49 5 90 triangles. So if you have trouble with that, I can send you. You know, plenty of videos where I talk about that, but I think you guys understand that from Alpha 2. Remember that? All you're worried about is whatever number is bigger and whichever number is smaller. So between 1 half and root 3 over 2, which one is the bigger number of the two? The one on the right, right? Root 3 over 2. This is the big number. And 1 half is going to be the small number. So as you do this, what I want you to think is, if I'm trying to get to 30 degrees, I need to go over a whole bunch. I want to go over to the right very, very far. But then I just go up a little tiny bit. Does that make sense? The x value is bigger than the y value. Just like plotting points. You know, if I have the point 4, 1, I go over 1, 2, 3, 4. I go over a lot to the right and up just a little. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. So we're going over root 3 over 2, up 1 half, right? Over a lot, up a little. You remember that? All right, the pi over 4. Pi over 4 is going to be the one where they're exactly the same thing. It's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we get root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. Pi over 3, this is the one where you have a little x value and a big y value. All right, so it's 1 half, root 3 over 2. And then in the second quadrant, by the way, on your homework, you guys forgot quadrants. First, second, third, fourth, right? If I refer to the quadrants, that's what they are, first, second, third, fourth. I mean, it's fine if you didn't on your homework, but usually quadrants are in Roman numerals. All right, so if I want that 120 degrees, do I go over a little, up a lot, or over a lot, up a little? What's bigger, the x value or the y value? The y values, right, are the bigger values. So it's going to be 1 half, comma, root 3 over 2. Now, what about the signs, though? We're in the second quadrant. It has to be negative, exactly. So we need negative 1 half, positive root 3 over 2. Does that make sense? So don't forget about your signs. Notice how it's symmetric. This one is the same as this one. It's just the signs are different. Okay, they're at the same location. All right, and then 3 pi over 4, that's going to be negative root 2 over 2, comma, negative root 2 over 2. No, positive. Sorry, now I'm really going to mess you up. So it's negative and then positive. So negative root 2 over 2, comma, positive root 2 over 2. And then 150 is going to be negative root 3 over 2, comma, positive 1 half. Now you write this down. Did you do this last year? All right, and then 180. Oh, well, let's skip 180. Let's do 210. So can you guys do these last six um, that are the root 2 over 2s? The one half, the root three over twos, can you do those? Okay. So I'll write them down as you guys do them. No. I'll give you a 
Remember, I, I sent you an email with a blank one. Don't strike fear in people's hearts. I never said tomorrow. <laughs> I should already know this anyway. All right, so you get those. Did you guys get those for your six? Check them. So 7 pi over 6 is the negative root 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. 5 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2, comma, negative root 2 over 2. 4 pi over 3 is negative 1 half, comma, negative root 3 over 2. Uh, 5 pi over 3 is 1 half, comma, negative root 3 over 2. 7 pi over 4 is positive root 2 over 2, comma, negative root 2 over 2. And 11 pi over 6 is positive root 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. Did you guys get that? Yeah. <laughs> you do it. I know. You get it speedy. Got to think big, small, big, small, big, small. All right. So then the last thing that people tend to mess up on the test, or on the quiz, which kills me because it's like, you know, I'll make this all like 20 points and then they'll miss these these four easy ones, right? Think about if I'm graphing this point right here in algebra one, that point, I go over one, up zero, right? That's the same thing that we're doing here. This radius is one unit. So the point on the, um, at the zero degrees is gonna be over one, up zero, right? So it's one comma zero. Don't put zero comma one. One comma zero. Same thing for 90. What's that one gonna be? Uh, zero. 0 comma 1, exactly, because it's like you're going up one unit. That's it. All right, and then 180, negative 1 comma 0, and then 3 pi over 2. Exactly. So you think you can get all of those right on your quiz? It's really not that bad. I think you can handle it. That's a beautiful drawing there. You didn't show us that. Yes, I did. <laughs> I guarantee I did. I can even show you the video from last year. <laughs> All right, so number three. So theta equals zero. All right, so we left off on your notes. I don't know what page it was. But we left off with example number three where theta is equal to zero. And we were talking about how things were related to the unit circle. So if you know your unit circle, you know sine, cosine, tangent, everything of all those angles on that circle. Okay? So if we have zero degrees or zero radians, I guess in this case, it doesn't have a little degree mark. We want to know where that's located. So it's located on the far right of our circle. So I always draw like a little tiny circle. I draw the point, and then I write what the coordinates of the point are. So that would be 1, 0. So yesterday, we talked about how the x value is cosine of theta, and the y value is sine of theta. So every time you write that point, cosine of your angle is the x, sine of the angle is the y. So when I ask for a sine of 0, well, I have theta, but theta is equal to 0. Sine of theta is going to be 0, right? It's the y value. Cosine is going to be 1. Tangent is sine over cosine. So on our unit circle, it ends up being the y value divided by the x value. So 0 over 1 is 0. Cosecant, remember I told you C's and S's go together. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So it's going to be 1 over sine. So it's going to be 1 over the y value. So it's going to be 1 over 0. Hmm. Yeah, undefined. Secant is 1 over cosine. So 1 over x, which is 1 over 1, which is 1. And cotangent is going to be 1 over tangent. Well, what if we have 1 over tangent? That means the reciprocal of tangent, right? So tangent was sine over cosine. So another way of writing cotangent is cosine over sine. So it's going to be the x value over the y value. So it's going to be 1 over 0, which is undefined, right? So these can be undefined. All right, so every single time you're doing this, you're drawing like a little tiny circle. We don't want to draw the full circle because that takes forever. So if you only have two problems on your test that have to do with this, you'll have more, no worries. But you spend a whole 20 minutes drawing out the entire unit circle. Kind of a waste of time, right? You need to know how to draw a little tiny one very quickly because you'll have that all the time in AP Calc. All right, so if I have 5 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, ooh, that's a little hard. It's 1 and 2 thirds pi. Hmm, where's 5 pi over 3? It's in the fourth quadrant. 
and it's pi over 3 away from being at 2 pi, right? It's 60 degrees away from 360. All right, so it's right there. So this is the one where we go over a little tiny bit, 1 half, and we go down a whole bunch, root 3 over 2. So the sine of theta is going to be negative root 3 over 2. The cosine is going to be 1 half. The tangent is sine divided by cosine. So we flip. So the 2 over 2 goes away, so I get negative root 3. All right, cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of sine, right? So we have 1 over negative root 3 over 2. So remember that just flips it. So it's going to be negative 2 over root 3. Now some of you guys, as I said yesterday, are going to be pros at this. You're going to do it so fast. What do I get when I rationalize and multiply by root 3 over 3? Yeah, negative 2 root 3 over 3, right? I'm multiplying by root 3 over 3. Root 3 over root 3. All right, and then secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Well, cosine is 1 half, so its reciprocal is really easy. Yep, 2. And then cotangent is going to be the reciprocal of tangent. So you can do 1 over negative root 3, right, since we just found tangent, which if you rationalize, multiply by root 3 over root 3. So negative root 3 over 3, exactly. Right. You guys are speedy. All right, good. I'll box all these in so you can see them. All right, so example one. So now it just says find the sine, cosine, and tangent. So sometimes I don't ask for all six. I just ask for those first three. So sine, cosine, and tangent. So again, we have theta equals pi. So let's draw a little tiny circle. Theta equals pi would be over here. So that's the point, negative 1, comma, 0. So if I have sine of pi, it's going to be 0. It's the y value. Cosine of pi is negative 1. And tangent of pi is sine over cosine, so 0 over negative 1, which is 0. Does this all make sense? Do you guys see how it's very, very useful to know those unit circle values? So theta equals negative pi over 6. So some of you guys had trouble with this in your homework. A negative angle means that instead of going this way, we go this way around, OK? So we're going to go backwards. We're going to go clockwise. So if I have negative pi over 6, it's the same as pi over 6. It's just starting at 0 and going backwards pi over 6. So I shouldn't say it's the same as pi over 6. It's right there. OK, so I always like to draw it on the circle so I can see what that point is. <laughs> So that point would be over a lot, down just a little tiny bit. So it's root 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. All right, so when I talk about sine of negative pi over 6, the sine is going to be negative 1 half. Cosine of negative pi over 6, cosine is going to be root 3 over 2. And then tangent of negative pi over 6 is the sine divided by the cosine. All right, so it's going to be negative 1 half times 2 over root 3. So we get negative 1 over root 3, which is negative root 3 over 3 if we rationalize. All making sense? All right, so it kind of talks a little bit about domain and range. So on our unit circle, our domain is like our theta. It's what we're plugging in for. Okay. The domain could really be anything. I can plug in positive angles. I can plug in negative angles. But for the most part, a lot of times in pre-calc, we'll make the domain 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so that way you can, you know, if you're trying to solve for the x value, solve for the, um, I guess I should say theta, then I only have you solve between 0 and 2 pi. That's kind of nice instead of having all of them. Um, but we'll talk about what if we don't have just 0 to 2 pi as well. And then the range is what you're getting out. So let's think. So sine, if you think about the unit circle, what is the biggest y value that you can get out on your unit circle? 1, exactly. What's the smallest y value? Negative 1, okay? The range then for sine and cosine is between negative 1 and 1. You're never going to get like sine of that angle equals 2. It's not going to happen. The biggest it can be is 1. All right, so let's see if you guys are pros at this. So every single time you do these problems, I want you to get in the habit of drawing a little tiny unit circle and thinking about what, where the angle is. So that point would be root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. 
So when it says sine of pi over 6, what is it going to be? One half. It's the y value. Does that make sense? So cosine of 3 pi over 2. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is down here. 3 pi over 2 is at the bottom at 270 degrees. So it's going to be 0 comma negative 1, right? So the cosine then is going to be 0. Cosine of pi over 4, right here. So that's the point that's root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. So the cosine is going to be root 2 over 2. So you don't necessarily have to write the point for every single one, but at least draw the little picture because it's very, very useful. Okay? So do that for D through I. Try to solve them. All right, so I'll do them up here. So cotangent of pi over 6. So cotangent is 1 over tangent, but what's another way we can think of cotangent? Right, tangent was, regular tangent was sine over cosine, so cotangent is its reciprocal. It's going to be cosine over sine. So we're going to have cosine of pi over 6 divided by sine of pi over 6. So every time we see cotangent, you can think of it like that. So pi over 6 is over here. It's over a lot, up a little. So when I talk about it, it's cosine, it's root 3 over 2, and it's sine, is going to be 1 half. So if you have a fraction like that where they're both divided by 2, like a fraction within a fraction, you can multiply by 2 over 2. You would end up getting root 3. That's a quick way of doing that. If you didn't do that, then just think of it as root 3 over 2, and then divided by 1 half is times 2 over 1. And then pretty quickly you do see it's root 3. Okay? All right, tangent of pi over 4. So tangent of pi over 4, that one's actually an easy one. Okay, because pi over 4 is where we have root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. So tangent, remember, is sine over cosine. But in this case, sine and cosine are both the same thing. All right, they're both, yep, they're both pi over 4, or they're both root 2 over 2. So we end up getting 1. All right, and then cosecant of 3 pi over 2. So it's down here. So cosecant is going to be 1 over the sine. Right, C's and S's go together, not the obvious one. All right, so we get 1 over sine. Well, that's the point, 0 comma negative 1. So sine is negative 1, so it's 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. So see how we're doing this. So draw a little circle, figure out the point, think about if it's x, y, y over x, x over y, you know, what are we doing? All right, so tangent of pi over 2. So pi over 2 is going to be up here at the top of our circle. So that's the point 0, 1. So if I talk about tangent, I'm going to do the sine of pi over 2 divided by the cosine of pi over 2. So the sine of pi over 2 is 1, but cosine is 0. So tangent of pi over 2? Undefined. Undefined, exactly. All right, so how about tangent of 0? Yeah, it's 0, because this is 1, 0. So when we do sine over cosine, it's 0 over 1. So we get 0. And secant of pi over 3 is 1 over cosine of pi over 3. So draw a little circle. Think about where pi over 3 is. That's 1 half comma root 3 over 2. So we have 1 divided by 1 half. So what do we get? 2. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. Did you get all of them? Anybody get all of them? Yeah, a couple of you. Yeah, yeah, and Olivia. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> Never would have guessed that one. <laughs> All right, here we go. So it says notice that sine of zero is the same as sine of two pi, which is the same as sine of four pi, and so on. Okay, this works for any location on the circle. Like if I had, I don't know, seven pi over six. All right, seven pi over six is over here. Okay. We talked about coterminal angles yesterday, or two days ago, I can't remember. Not two days ago, that would have been Sunday. A few lessons ago. So coterminal angles, remember, is where you add 360 degrees or subtract 360 degrees. It's already in radians, though. Add 2 pi, subtract 2 pi. Okay, so if I add 2 pi to 7 pi over 6, and I'm trying to find the sine of it, then that means 7 pi over 6 is actually the same as 19 pi over 6, right? Because I'm adding 12 pi over 6. I'm adding 2 pi to it. Does that make sense? Which is really the same as, what is that, 31 pi over 6. Like, you can continue to add 12 pi over 6. Itself. Okay? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? All right, so this is because um, sine and cosine uh, have a period of 2 pi, meaning the, the uh, values on our unit circle are the same every single rotation around the circle. Okay? 
So period periodic function uh, is basically if you have f of t is equal to the same as f of t plus c. So if you continue to add something to the x values or whatever, then you get the same thing. So that's called a periodic function. All right, so sine and cosine both have a period of 2 pi. Tangent does not. Okay, tangent is a little bit smaller than 2 pi. So let's think about tangent. Let's think about the most basic one for tangent. Tangent of pi over 4, that's my favorite. Because tangent of pi over 4 is what? Sine of pi over 4 over cosine of pi over 4 is 1, right? It's root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2. It's 1. So tangent of pi over 4 is equal to 1. Can I get tangent of, you know, something in the second quadrant equals 1? So something over here, is the tangent going to equal a positive number? No. What about in the third quadrant? Yes. So tangent of 5 pi over 4 is also 1. Okay. That's not a coincidence. Every single time you add pi to anything, you actually get the same tangent value. Because what's it doing? It's taking you to the quadrant that's directly across from it. Does that make sense? So tangent actually has a period of pi. Okay, it's not as big as 2 pi. Okay, so its values repeat every single pi. Um, so we'll talk about that a lot throughout the next couple chapters. All right, and then we also will talk about even and odd function. Okay, so I don't know if I mentioned even and odd in algebra too. Do you remember me talking about even and odd functions? I don't know. Okay, so the most basic even function, let me kind of sketch it down here, is y equals x squared. Okay, you don't have to draw this, just kind of pay attention. Okay, so let me see, who can I pick on? Lauren. <laughs> She's like, why me? I'm so sweet. All right, <laughs> if I plug in 2 into y equals x squared, what do you get for the y value? 4. You get 2 comma 4. All right, Catherine, what happens when I plug in negative 2? Yes. <laughs> so if I plug in a negative 2, or a positive 2, I get the same value out. Does that make sense? That's what happens in an even function. Okay, so the formal definition, yeah, yeah, keep your hands to yourself, is that if you have f of negative f, it's the same as f of x. Does that make sense? So if I plug in a negative x value and a positive x value, I get the same thing. All right, now an odd function. Here's the most basic odd function. Okay, so yeah, yeah, when I plug in 2, what do I get? 2 cubed is? <laughs> eight, uh huh. And Louie, when I plug in negative two, what do I get? Uh, yeah, <laughs> eight. Yeah. So we, with an odd function, whenever you plug in a certain x value, and then you plug in the opposite x value, you get opposite y values. Okay. One gave you a positive, one gave you a negative. Does that make sense? That's what an odd function is. Okay. So let's think about sine, cosine, and tangent. So think on the unit circle. Let's do something really easy. Let's talk about 60 degrees, and let's talk about negative 60 degrees. We can talk about negative angles. Okay, 60 degrees. At 60 degrees, I have the point 1 half comma root 3 over 2. And at negative 60 degrees, I have 1 half comma negative root 3 over 2. Okay, the x value is the same. Is x value is x sine or cosine? Yeah, cosine of 60 is equal to cosine of negative 60. They're the same. Right? That means that cosine is even. So cosine is an even function. I don't know if that's right right now. All right, but if I plug in, or if I'm finding the sine, if I find sine of 60 and sine of negative 60, what do I end up getting? Are they equal to each other? No, they're opposite each other, right? So that means that sine is odd. All right, what about tangent? What do you think? Yeah, tangent is also odd. All right, and then the question, it says, what do you think the period is for each trig function? So sine cosine uh, have a period of 2 pi. What else? So they're reciprocal. What are the reciprocal? Cosecant and secant. They have a period of 2 pi. But tangent and then what else? Cotangent. You guys are sleepy. Both have a period of pi. Okay, does it make sense? So tangent has a period of pi as well as reciprocal. It will also have a period of pi. 
All right, so it says use the period to evaluate following. This is really just coterminal angles. That's all it is. We talked about coterminal angles before. So keep changing your angle until you get something that's familiar on that interval 0 to 2 pi. That's the easiest way to do it. Okay, so we have 13 pi over 6. Is that on the interval 0 to 2 pi? No. Is it too big, too small? What is it? It's too big, right? We're already bigger than 2. It's like 2 and 1, 6, 5. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 2 pi. So I'm subtracting 12 pi over 6. What do I get when I do that? Pi over 6. So sine of 13 pi over 6 is actually the same as sine of pi over 6. They're exactly the same. So do we know sine of pi over 6? One half. Don't always go through degrees. It'll take you guys forever. And then cosine of negative 7 pi over 2. So that's not on the interval 0 to 2 pi. It's, it's negative, right? We want to get it positive. So let's try to add 2 pi. So if I add 4 pi over 2, does that get me there? No, I'm at cosine of negative 3 pi over 2. Still not there. Add it again. What do I get? Pi over 2. Do I know that one? Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Yep, exactly. Make sense? So if you can keep adding and subtracting um, 2 pi, then you'll be good. All right, so that is the end of that one. All right, so you guys have a little bit of time.